Welcome to the sixth of the Walton Project uh, videos. This one is concerned particularly with uh, a job that, uh, that I came across in the making of the pistol, which was uh, to produce castings for the ramrod pipes. Now, if we look at this pistol, which is about 30 years earlier than uh, the Wogdens, 1760, you'll see that, um, amongst other things, there are two very nice silver pipes holding the ramrod. And similarly, I need uh, two pipes uh, cast in silver for the Wogden. So I've got it all ready and I've got the place for the two pipes. Uh, and I've got from the picture of the Wogden here, the full size picture, I've got an, Im uh, an image of exactly what I want. So this video is about how to go about making a lost wax investment casting. So that, as you'll see, I'll go through each of the stages. I'm not going to do a continuous uh, video of the whole process because it would take far too long. I'm just going to show you and explain each step as we go through uh, and hopefully show you the final pouring. So we've done a little bit already. I've, I've been through several iterations of this uh, process. I started off um, by trying to cast brass because it's a lot cheaper uh, and uh, easier than going straight to silver. And so I've, I have actually succeeded in doing some brass uh, lost wax casting. So I've got a little bit of uh, experience on how to go about it. So the, um, the essentially what we're trying to make is the ramrod pipe that goes into where the ramrod goes into the wood there, which is partly um, partly circular. Uh, with a with a couple of circular rims on it and then partly carved so we we're going to look at how we do that so off we go before we have a look at some of those things that i've been doing i thought i would have a little word about risk and safety now you, you'll see things on those videos that uh, might appear to some people to be dangerous and I thought that I should explain my attitude to this um, so that you know where I'm coming from. Uh, I've, I've, we've all been doing dangerous things throughout our lives. I started 70 years ago when I did a little experiment with an unshuttered mains plug of putting two wires in with a torch bulb. Uh, my mother never found out what had happened to the electricity but it was an interesting experiment and, and, and it taught me what what you have to do when you want to do things that are inherently dangerous um, and that is essentially you have to be totally aware of the risks now if, if it's a risky operation you have two options one is not to do it that's some would say the sensible option. The other is to do what you can to mitigate the risks and to be fully aware of the danger that you're taking on and that's my approach. So I do things that some people would think are dangerous like when I was young making explosives, um, distilling alcohol and those sorts of things. Um, fully aware uh, even even at quite a young age, that what I was doing was potentially dangerous. And I think I've got away with it pretty well so far, touch wood. Um, I have a number of injuries, most of which are minor, uh, and come from uh, activities that you wouldn't think were dangerous, like cycling or um, running or even recently, uh, on the back of my hand, making tea. Um, so... That's, that's where I am. Don't think that you can follow blindly the, the things that I do. Um, you need to take responsibility for things that are inherently risky. So let's have a look now at uh, what I've been doing. And so here we are. 
we're just going to have a look at the, the starting process uh, for making the waxes for the investment casting. So this is a, an example, this one I made earlier, of a casting. So it's got a section here uh, which I turned on a lathe and this section which I've carved and built up if necessary with some extra wax. So that's roughly what we're aiming to uh, produce. Now how do we do that? Uh, well first of all it's done with uh, a machinable casting wax which is I think this is gold from gold wax from HS Walsh. Uh, it's a, a very strong uh, fairly high melting point wax it never gets really very fluid it's it's quite viscous so uh, but it um, it's it's mainly used as something you can carve so what I do with that is is to heat up a quantity of it in a small frying pan on the stove and it needs to be probably moderately hot but not burning and then I get some sections of uh, this is this is 20 mil plastic conduit which I cut off uh, and stick them on a base of modeling clay immerse that in water up to about here so that it stays cool because otherwise you get too much distortion in the tube and then pour my wax into that let it set and then push it out of the tube you generally need to trim the top uh, where it flanges over a bit so then what I end up with then is a, a perfect rod of uh, uh, machinable wax uh, if now you want to be very careful when you're doing that that you don't have any water around you don't let the water that's uh, around the outside of the tube get inside it you don't get any drops of water in there because if you do you'll get thousands of little bubbles and then the surface of whatever you're machining will be at no use so we've got a couple of bars of machinable wax and we're going to take those out to the lathe turn the bit of um, the bit of the uh, the ramble pipe that that is more or less circular. I'm not going to file these flats on here because if I do that it'll make the wall very thin and then the wax won't flow very the the metal won't flow very much well when I've got it in the mold. As you can see from this example here which is one I did uh, it, day before yesterday where the wax hasn't flown into that a very thin bit around there so I'm going to keep that fairly thick and then file it down when it's done so that's basically that part of the process once we've got the wax then uh, it goes onto a base here which fits my flask which is a section of tubing uh, and There is the there is a flask. It's a section of a, an oxygen bottle with a couple of studs put in there, so I can pick it up. Um, and that's stuck on. That will be when we've mounted the wax on there. That will be sealed with plasticine and filled with the investment. So that little base uh, is a casting out of a piece I turned up. Uh, which I can't find at the moment but I turned up a little sort of funnel shaped piece and cast into it oh, here it is so I could just cast into that uh, with some other not quite such uh, strong wax just ordinary ordinary investment um, ordinary wax for casting with rather than machinable wax so there's the sort of start of it so I'm now going out to machine uh, something that will fit.
I can hold it. Fairly coarse file over there. Just needs quite a lot of patience, most of which, are, which I don't have a lot of, but there we go. So it's coming. It's quite surprising how quickly it actually comes together when you get going on it. to admit this is the third of these ones I've made so the steel wool is very handy for cleaning it up and making you so you can see where you've got take quite a bit off the top here and as we get my begins to get the shape one is after. And so on. Several hours later, I should have finished this, in which case I'll show it to you. But you get the idea, just keep filing away. Okay, so I've uh, filed up the rest of this um, wax for the ramrod pipe and I've put a few sort of runners on it and uh, generally sorted it out. The pink 
the pink wax is, is uh, low melting point wax for doing runners and things. The green wax is just something that I happen to have casting wax to make the, the, the feed in. Uh, and the brown wax is the machinable wax. So there's my uh, wax. And now I'm going to put the flask over the top of it. So I'm going to put some modeling clay around the base to stop the, the idea being to stop the investment running out when I fill it. So there's my flask. Push it down into that. That and run around the joint to seal it up. All right, and maybe <coughs> I'll just put a bit of tape around there. It's slightly off center, but it doesn't really matter, I don't think. So I'll just, just have to clean it up when I get to the next stage. I'm so sure I'm going to fall off and invest it up. the wax. So I've got <coughs> um, so there's 200 the glass of water. So now we'll taste the water. Here's my bit of silver that's so, yeah. going to be. I've got uh, 500 plus grams of uh, gold star XL, to do the which is from the investment. Which is from the using as the investment powder. Um, and so I'm going to need to put the water in first. Now I've got four minutes to mix it according to their instructions. So let's add the powder. Four minutes seems an awful long time for mixing, I have to say, but that's fine. Three and a half minutes now. I'll just get ready for the next phase, which is to take the lid off the vacuum flask and put put the uh, investment in there and put the lid back on. And switch on the vacuum pump. And that's whizzing down, so we've had our four minutes now. Uh, and we've got one minute to vacuum the bowl. I don't know whether you can see what's going on in there. Um, probably a bit different. It will foam up quite distinctly in a minute, but as if it was boiling. Now it's more or less subsiding 
but it will still go on bubbling it will still go on bubbling because actually the water in it is boiling and it go on bubbling indefinitely um, so let's uh, that's had about a minute and 20 seconds so let's let the uh, vacuum on there there we are now the next step there we are that looks good bubbles now we pour the investment into the flask down the side so we don't pour it over the wax we pour it down the side and let it sort of float up around the investment carrying any air up with it you have to be careful with your waxes that you don't have any any areas that trap air as the liquid level rises so we'll go for about half an inch cover over the top of the, the peak of the thing to make sure it's strong enough so that's about it right so now uh, we have to vacuum the flask for two minutes There we are. The flask is almost too tall for the chamber. There we are. So two minutes. We're running a little bit longer than they say we should have finished this thing in eight minutes, so we'll probably be about nine and a half. And we've finally got it done. So we have to rock it a bit and dislodge any bubbles that are building up. It will start to boil. I mean, I'm, I'm a bit dubious about this process actually, uh, because it could go on. It'll go on bubbling indefinitely at this rate. I did as an interesting experiment. If you take a cupful of uh, a cupful of tap water and put it in the vacuum chamber and vacuum it, it will go on boiling indefinitely, and you'll get bubbles out of it. Right. So let's let that all subside. We still got sure we dislodge any bubbles that are sitting there. That looks right. Now we have to wait um, about 90 minutes for uh, that lot to go off and we separate. So having put it in the arc, well I gave it 90 minutes to set off and then put it in the Argo for about 40 minutes at about 2.20, which is what it happened to be at. Now I've transferred it uh, to my little furnace where you can see it's smoking away as it burns off the wax and that's running at about uh, 2.50, 2.50-odd degrees. So that's uh, going to be like that for a couple of hours. And that should get rid of all the wax and then it's going to be taken up slowly to 7.30. So I set up for... Uh, a casting I'm doing silver onto 
the rum rod pipes at the moment so I'm just putting some silicon sealant around the vacuum system for sucking the metal into the invest <coughs> so that's all there right so let's just check that we have a vacuum put the vacuum system on looks pretty good So my um, my furnace is down here and it's currently at 500 degrees. So I've got some silver ready to melt there. So we'll start heating up the flask the um sorry the so we've got a blow torch here which sits on this frame and that's an adjustable trigger that I can <coughs> First batch of 
silver is melted, so I'll put some borax on there and then I'll add some more to the pot. I'm melting around 100 grams of uh, silver into here. Going there. now I'm bubbling nicely so we just put a bit more borax in there heat it up and then we're ready to go <coughs> Well, we've done the uh, the casting of this last silver bit, um, and uh, it's worked. I've got a slightly uh, rough surface finish on it, which I think was due to the fact that I ran some of the temperatures too high. But actually that doesn't really matter because the whole thing's got to be filed off anyway uh, and there's nothing, I mean all the detail is still there. <coughs> uh, so I think um, 
I think I'm pretty happy with that. So now I've just got to start cutting off all the bits that I stuck on it to get a good flow of, of um, silver. I was a bit paranoid about it because of the failures I'd had. So, uh, But that looks pretty good to me. I shall go with that and then we'll have a look at it when I've filed it all down and uh, see where we got to. Well, as I'd hoped, that casting uh, for the rear ramrod pipe turned out to be perfect um, with a bit of filing up, which I knew I had to do anyway because it wasn't fitted into the, uh, into the woodwork. <coughs> I deliberately made it really quite oversized and anyway it would have to be filed uh, to the profile of the wood. So there's that one, I'll put the flats on it. Um, could just do with a touch on the polishing mop I think and that was the one I made previously so there we are we've done that casting job um, and I have now uh, more or less learnt to cast um, I've still got I've no doubt a few mistakes to make but uh, that's pretty good and I shall now find some more projects that I can use the equipment I've got so there we are, thank you very much for watching.